Hey everyone, it's uh, Michael here. Um, I did not expect such a wonderful intro, so that makes my job easier here. I'm gonna just skip through some of these a bit faster. We'll be talking about error handling in Nuxt, specifically client-side error handling. So I'm the Mastering Nuxt 3 instructor. Um, I've written articles, various places on the internet, um, I also have a newsletter that goes out weekly to many different people, all about Vue. Uh, in summer, I actually released a book, uh, Vue Tips Collection, which, funnily enough, is a collection of Vue Tips. So I also have some other courses um, that were mentioned previously, and you may have come across my blog in your internet searching, wondering why Vue is not doing the things that you want it to do. Uh, and that's how I got started in all of this. I was writing my blog, and people seemed to enjoy it. So I kept going, and here we are. I'm also on Twitter, if you want to follow me there. And that's enough about me. So let's get to the meat of this talk. So, as mentioned before, this is a talk about error handling in Nux. And this is actually a preview of one of the lessons inside of Mastering Nux 3. And for this talk, we will be in Chapter 3, which is all about making our apps robust in the real world. And we'll be on Lesson 3 here handling client-side errors with Nuxt error boundary. So I've given away a bit of the, uh, the punchline here, but the reason that we want to handle errors in our application is that end users are unpredictable. We may think that our application is obvious in how it should be used, but then our users get a hold of it, and they start doing all sorts of wild, crazy things that you could have never imagined. And it's the same uh, with, with the world in general. The world is unpredictable. And once you start using your app in production, and it's not on your machine where everything is perfect and requests are going to work every single time, we need to have error handling so that our app doesn't fall over when something unexpected occurs because something unexpected will happen. So this is why we need error handling. So now we will go through the demo. So let me give you a bit of context here, because at this point in the course, we've already spent a bunch of time building out our demo application. This demo application is an online course platform where we can go through different lessons and we can mark the different lessons as complete. And although we haven't at this point connect it up to a database, this state here is persisted in local storage. So at this point, we're going to create an error for ourselves so that we can handle it. We'll come over here and we'll row create created error. This create error method is provided by Nuxt, and it works on the client side as well as on the server side. And it just makes it a little bit easier for us to create errors and then have them uh, thrown in a, in a nice way that works regardless of the client side or server side. So if I open up my console here, 
we can see that when I tried to hit this button, instead of our model value actually being updated like it should be, we get this error, could not update. So in order to handle this error in a nice way, we're going to use the Nuxt error boundary component. This component is provided by Nuxt, and what it does is it allows us to isolate errors within a specific part of our application. And this is great because instead of throwing up a generic full screen error with a generic error message, we can actually know much more information about what type of error might have happened and how to resolve that error. We also don't have to let the entire application crash. We can have just that specific part of the application crash, and then we can uh, you know, resolve that and move on from there without the whole thing falling over completely. So this Nuxt error boundary component, anything rendered inside of the default slot here will be contained. Any error that happens in that default slot will be caught by the Nuxt error boundary. So let's see this in action. I'm going to go to a different page here. Of course, page. And so the way that we have the routing set up here is that if we take a look at this, this route up here, I'm not sure how well you can see this here, but we've got slash course slash chapter, and then we have the chapter slug, and then we have lesson, and then the lesson slug. And if we come over to our pages directory here, make this a little bit bigger, if it will let me. No, okay. There we go. Um, so you can see that we've defined our route here so that this lesson slug page is actually a nested child route of the course page. So when this error happens here inside of the lesson, the, uh, the lesson page, we actually want to come up one level to the course page to where it's rendered here through this Nuxt page. And so we're actually going to wrap that here. We add in our Nuxt error boundary component. Now, when we come over here to mark this lesson as, as incomplete, we're going to toggle this. We no longer have an error in the console because this Nuxt error component, Nuxt error boundary component, has caught the error. You'll also notice that the entire lesson here has now disappeared. And that's because the Nuxt error boundary component switches between rendering the default slot and the error slot. So this lets us put in a nice error message if we want, which we will do right now. Just gonna copy and paste this in. Now that we've added in this template here, we can see that we've got our error message along with some information about the specific error that we have. So by using this Nuxt error boundary, we're able to isolate the errors that happen in the lesson route or the lesson page from the rest of this app here. 
so that if this part of the app crashes, we can still use the rest of this app here. But it's not enough for us to just show an error message. We also want to fix whatever error has happened and continue on using the application. So in order to do that with the Nuxt error boundary component, we need to take this error, error value here and set it back to null. We're going to create a new function for ourselves in order to do this, as well as adding in a reset button. So now we've added in a reset button here, which shows up underneath our error message. But we now need to implement this reset error method. This method is pretty straightforward. We're going to take in this error object that we received from the scope slot up here. So we receive it here, and it gets passed in through this method here. And then we can reset the value here back to null. And what this will do is then the Nuxt error boundary component will then re-render the default slot again. So let's see this in action. If I click on that, we get our error. Then if I hit reset, we get our, our lesson back. And so now we've seen the complete life cycle of creating an error, handling that error, throwing uh, or showing an error message with the named error slot, and then resetting that error by setting the value back to null. But there's one problem here, in that, and that's that if this component that we render here in the default slot just keeps crashing for whatever reason, we get stuck in this infinite loop. We'll reset the error. The component will be re-rendered. It'll crash again. And then we'll reset it and then it will crash, and then we'll reset it, and this doesn't work. So in order to solve this or get around this, we, we need to be a bit more um, thoughtful in how we actually handle the error. And so this is going to depend on what exactly is in this component. So depending on what where you put this next error boundary component, you'll know Different, way, different things that might be going wrong and different ways that you might be able to resolve the underlying error before we reset the value here. So one way that works to, in order to uh, get around this issue is to navigate away to somewhere that's safe. So what we're going to do is grab this first lesson here, grab the URL. And we're actually going to, whenever there's an error, when we hit the reset button, we're going to redirect back to the first lesson. And so we can do that using the built-in method, navigate to. And this is another convenience method that works on client side and server side that lets us redirect and navigate to a new place. And note the ordering here. We have to navigate first before we reset the error. Because if we try and do it the other way around, we'll still be caught in that infinite loop, which is not what we want. So you'll have to imagine with me for a moment that this 
Uh, third lesson here just doesn't load. The, the page crashes, but only for this specific lesson. So this page crashes. And in our imaginary scenario, it's not enough to simply reset and uh, change that value back to null because it will keep crashing. But now that we've navigated, or now that we set it up to navigate to our first lesson, then things work perfectly. Oh, we navigate to the second lesson instead. Well, that works too. So now that we've navigated away from the third lesson, the error is resolved in a bit of a brute force kind of way, but at least it's fixed and our app can continue to work as normal. So that is a bit about using Nuxt error boundary to solve and to handle client-side errors within Nuxt 3. Now in the Mastering Nuxt course, we go on to talk about handling server-side errors and doing route validation, adding in custom error pages, and we do uh, you know, the whole the whole thing so that you can make sure that your apps are going to be production ready. Um, and I'm just going, going to do a quick plug again. Mastering Nuxt 3 is out. It has been for a couple weeks now. And you can get it at masteringnux.com. And uh, reminding you about that coupon code, the first 100 people, only the first 100 people will get that extra 30% uh, off plus that extra $15 off. So if you're interested in doing that, make sure you get there before everyone else does. I know I said that before in a pre-recorded thing, but if you're coming in late or you know you missed it, it's a good reminder. And before uh, before I finish here, I do want to mention that I am also having a Black Friday sale next week, and you can grab this book, View Tips Collection, as well as all of my other courses for pretty good discount, and that's going to happen next week. So that's the URL there. You can also Google View Tips, and that should bring you straight there. So I want to thank you for taking the time to be here with me. Uh, you can find me on so many different places online and on Twitter, as I mentioned before. I don't want to uh, you know, beat you over the head with that. I'm sure if you're interested in finding me, you'll be able to do so. So thank you. Helps if I unmute myself. I was talking yeah. to you, but you know, that's that is the part that is so frustrating. I'm like, computer, can't you just know? Can't you just know I want to talk? It's a good thing sometimes. But thank you. Thank you for teaching us so much and also talking about a bit more about what mastering Nuxt is and the course that we'll be doing there. Now are there specific categories of errors that you end up accounting for a lot in your view next applications? I would say, in my experience at least, um, the biggest sources of errors are um, network requests. So if you're doing data fetching of any kind, sometimes you know, you're on a faulty network or something like that. And so there's often a lot of errors there. Also, um, as mentioned before, anytime a user is involved, so user input, um, and that involves even to like typing in the route to go somewhere on your application. People are going to typo. I typo all the time, and you know it's nice when the application just you know redirects me to somewhere that is actually part of the website. That, yeah, that, that does help. 
Uh, do you have any hints on when it's best to show a full page error versus an error with the error boundary component? Yeah, so the Nuxt error boundary component, um, sorry, actually it's the, uh, the create error method has, has an option to create a fatal error. And when you do that, it shows a full full screen uh, full page error. And I think that's probably the best way to think about it is like, is, is this an error that you can recover from and keep going? Or is this like, you know, completely crashed? There's no way we can deal with this. We need to like, just, you know, throw up a full screen thing and just like get out of here. All right. I dig it. I dig it. And do you have a preferred error monitoring service? Monitoring. I can talk. Monitoring service. There we go. I I don't have a preferred one. There are a few that I've used in the past with uh with jobs that I've I've had and um feels like there's a lot of great options to choose from. So I I haven't really looked into that. So no. Do you have like a top three or anything? Like or some that you've used that worked well for you? Um, so I can say that in the past I've used Rollbar for error monitoring. Um and that would be the one that would come to mind. Um but there's lots of other ones that I've I've seen and you know. Right. It's hard to know. Yeah. There's so many options out there and everyone is always creating. So there's even more. Yeah, it's like, exactly. all right. What is the difference between next error boundary and V dash if? Right. So if you look at the, the source for next error boundary, it's actually not, um, it's not doing like a crazy amount of stuff. And essentially it's, there's a view gives a, a hook into catching errors that are bubbling up. And so then basically it is it is like a VF with some extra stuff on there. And you know that it's been well thought out and tested. Um, and it's going to work really well. And so in a way, it is kind of like um, a really nicely done VF. Got it. And uh, a reset is uh, is fine in principle, but what if a user just navigates via another link on the page? Yeah, so I was thinking about this recently, and I think um, with the Nuxt error boundary component and the way that Nuxt uh, tries to preserve components across routes. Um, if you have an error and you navigate to, for example, in our in this demo app, if you navigate to another lesson, that error will still be there because it's, it's it hasn't been cleared yet. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think you might have to do some sort of middleware that would reset errors. Um, I'm not sure exactly how uh, I would I would want to implement that. Um, you can also set a key on the next error boundary that's keyed to like the route that you're on. And so every time you switch routes, you're forcing it to recreate that next error boundary component. Um, I'm not sure that that is the best way to do it, but that probably would work. Got it. And as we've said before, y'all, uh, and I love, Michael, that you were bringing this up. There are many ways to reach out to Michael including Twitter. So if we have more questions, like we definitely can reach out there. Uh, just if there's more questions or wanting to go into more of these um, in more detail. Um, now, next question is, can we raise different HTTP statuses in those errors? Yeah, so with the create error uh, method, you can um, I was just showing a shorthand form, which just gives you the message. Uh, like all you can do is provide a message, but you can also provide an object. 
and in there you can include status code and message and like all the the other stuff that you would expect an error to have. Sweet. And uh, has next three ha does next three have has wow I can't read today. Next three has a model for ES Lint. So does next three have a model for ES Lint? I do not know the answer to that okay. one. All right, and second to last of. Could nesting be an issue when we handle errors in templates, especially if compo the component already has some complexity? Um, nesting of the error boundary components. Um, I think I haven't tested if that you can nest the error boundary component, but I believe that you probably can and it would work like um, any sort of events bubbling up, if one cat, like the first one to catch it, gets it, basically. Um, yeah, um, not sure I one hundred percent understand the question. Okay, again, y'all hit us up on Twitter. We are happy yeah. to reply back there. You know, um, I know when people come on Teach Gen Tech or have questions there, I've made like little short videos afterwards too. So there's a lot of ways to help relay the message. And I personally just love Twitter making it so easy to connect to people. So, mm -hmm, sure. all right. Very last but not least, what is something that you're grateful for? I'm grateful that I get to do this as my job. So I get to play around with Next and test out all the cool new features and teach you about it. And so I think, I don't know, it's a pretty sweet job if you ask me. And I'm, I'm grateful that I get to do it. And that does remind me, I feel like this is like the best place ever for people to like for me to bug people like you to be like, hey, you should be on Teach Gen Tech, which is my live stream where I learn how to code. It's been a super fun. Uh, but I will hit you up afterwards because we yeah, know where definitely. to find you. We know where to find you. Well, thank you, Michael, for teaching us so much today and coming on uh, the conference. And we will see you next time. All right. Thank you.